Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to explain the different places to store your macros or VBA code. So there are actually five different places we can store macros or code within a workbook, within a project. And in this video, we're just going to cover the first three here, which are the sheet module, the this workbook module, and the code module. So we're first going to start with the code module because that's the one we're probably most familiar with. And uh, here I have this example workbook here. It's called VBA code modules. And you can see it open here within the project window in the VB editor. And then below that, we can see all the folders where different code modules are located. So we're typically used to seeing this modules folder here. And then within that, we have module one. And if I double click that module, that code module, that will open the code window over here on the right side. And we can see the macros that are stored within this code module. Now these code modules contain macros that will run when a user presses a button, maybe in the ribbon or in the worksheet, or they can also run these from the macros window. And code modules can also contain user-defined functions or UDFs. So it's very common place to store macros uh, that will be run when the user takes an action by pressing a button. And we can see that here in Excel. If I jump over to Excel, I have an example here. I've created this shape that it's assigned to that macro. So when I click this, that will actually run the macro and we'll see that list uh, of sheets right there, which is the result of the macro. We can also see this from the uh, developer tab. If we click the macros button, we'll see a list of all the macros and these are in the code module there. Here's our worksheet list and we could run it from here as well. So those are macros from a regular code module. Again, I'll jump back into the VB editor and the macro recorder also adds macros to uh, a module, a code module. And we can insert multiple code modules by going to the insert tab on the ribbon and choosing module. That'll add a new module, a new blank module to the modules folder. Now, what if we wanted to run a macro when the user takes an action within the workbook? Maybe they select a certain worksheet or edit a specific cell, and we want a macro to run when that action is taken by the user. For that, we can use event-based macros or event procedures, and those macros are stored in either the sheet module or the this workbook module. So we'll next take a look at the sheet module. So within our VBA project here, we have a Microsoft Excel objects folder. And this folder here contains all of the sheets and a sheet object for each sheet within this particular file, within this workbook. So we can see we have all these sheets listed right here. The sheet code name is on the left. And then the sheets tab name that is displayed within the workbook is on the right in parentheses here. And if we double click one of these, I'll just double click this sheet module or this sheet object that will open the code window for the sheet module. Now, typically this will be blank and you won't see this text here. I just added this text to describe what a sheet module can do. And sheet modules can contain macros that will run when that user takes an action in this specific sheet. So we can use event procedures here to take actions or to run macros when the user takes an action. And to do that, once we have the sheet module open, we can select here from this drop down right here, uh, this object drop down, and select worksheet. And that will automatically add an event procedure for the worksheet selection change event. So that means this macro will run every time the user selects a cell within this particular worksheet, within sheet one here, because we're looking at the code module for sheet one. And we can actually test that out by adding the word stop here uh, to stop the macro as it's running, or you can add a breakpoint here on the end sub line, something like that. And then we can go back to sheet one. So I'll go back to Excel. And when I select a cell here, that will stop because I have the word stop here. But that means that, that this macro ran when I selected that cell. So it's a pretty cool way to automatically run macros when users take actions within a worksheet. And this particular uh, event here, this pr event procedure has this variable called target, which returns the cell that is selected. The, you can see the address there, or it returns the range object of the cell or the range that's selected by the user. So we can use this to check to see which cell is selected, and then maybe take an action or run some kind of macro based on if that particular cell intersects a range of data or anything like that. 
Now the selection change event is added by default, but there are a bunch of other events we can choose from, from this procedures drop down over here on the right side. So if you just click this, you can see there's a list of all kinds of different events that we can choose from. So the activate event would run a macro when the user activates this particular worksheet. We can run a macro before they delete the sheet, when they make a change on the sheet itself, uh, all kinds of pivot table events. So there's all kinds of different events that we can run or macros that we can run when the user takes an action on this particular sheet. And when you select one of these, so I'll select the change event, that will automatically add the code, the event procedure for the worksheet change event right here. It adds it to the sheet module. So then we can just add whatever code we want to put in here when the work, in this case, when the user changes a cell within the worksheet, this macro will run. And as you can see, you can have multiple events here, event procedures, like I have the change event and the selection change event. You can have multiple procedures here. If you don't want the change, the selection change event, I'm just going to hit stop. The selection change is added by default, but we can just go ahead and delete that if we don't want to use that event. Now it's important to know that these events only run when the user takes an action in that specific sheet that the code is in. So for example here, if I double click on the sheet to object here, I have some code in my sheet to object and this is a macro that will basically select the entire row and column of the selected cell. And this particular macro is only going to run on sheet two because it's in the selection change event, this selection change event for the sheet two uh, module here. So if we jump back to Excel and I'll go to sheet two here, we can see this how this one works. When I select a cell, it just selects the entire row or column of that particular cell that I selected. But this macro is not going to run on any of the other sheets. So if I go over to sheet three, that macro does not run on sheet three. So if we did want that macro to run on all of the sheets, we can use the this workbook module for that. So we're now going to talk about the this workbook module and each workbook, or each Excel file has a this workbook module. It's located at the bottom of the Microsoft Excel objects folder under all of the sheets in the workbook. You'll see a this workbook object right here. And when you double click this, that will open the code module for the this workbook object. Again, it'll be blank. I already added some text here, some comments to just describe what it does. Now there's, we can also add events, event procedures to the this workbook object, and those events can run on the workbook itself. So this can be other types of events on the workbook. So we can see those again, if we go to uh, the object drop down right here, and then we'll choose workbook, that will automatically add the workbook open event right here, the code for that. And this code will run when the workbook opens. So if you wanted to, let's say for example, maybe you always want to have the first sheet in the workbook selected when the user opens the workbook and enables the macros, you could just put a line of code here that says sheets one, oops, sheets1.select, something like that. And that will select the first sheet in the workbook when the workbook is opened. Now there are a lot of other events for the workbook itself as well. So if we go over here to the procedure dropdown and click here, we can see as we scroll up to the top here, there's a lot of different events. So the activate event will uh, run the macro when the user activates this particular workbook. We can run a macro after the user saves a workbook, before they close a workbook, and there's all kinds of different events here that we can add. And you'll see that there's also sheet events here as well. So these are all the sheet events that we saw within the sheet module. They're also listed here within the workbook module. And that means we can run these events on all of the sheets in the workbook or just on specific sheets. So for example, with that last uh, example we saw, we were using the selection change event. So now I'm going to add this sheet selection change event to the this workbook module. And we'll see we get the macro or the event procedure added right here, workbook sheet selection change. And this event will run when the user selects any range or any cell within any sheet in the workbook. So I could go back over to my sheet two uh, module here and I could just copy this macro that I already have. I'll just hit control C on the keyboard to copy that. 
go back into this workbook and paste it right here. And now that macro will run on every single sheet within the workbook. So if I go back to Excel, I can see now when I select a cell here, I'm getting that intersection of the entire row and column selected. I'm on sheet three, I can go over to sheet one and the same thing will happen here. And we can also target specific sheets. So if I jump back to the Visual Basic Editor, you'll see one of the parameters here, one of the variables that returned is the SH as object. That returns the sheet object uh, for the sheet that the user currently has selected. So we can target that or we can add an if statement within our macro here to say only run this macro if the user is on a specific sheet or a sheet that starts with a specific name or something like that. So again, the possibilities are endless here of what we can do with these event procedures to have macros run when the user takes an action within the workbook. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of where you can store your macros and your VBA code uh, to take different actions or when the user takes different actions, you can make different things happen and really make your workbooks and your projects interactive and very dynamic. So we did not cover the user forms in this video and we also didn't cover class modules. We'll save that for another video because those are more advanced topics. But I hope that helps get you started. Of course, you can leave a comment below with any questions and I'll be happy to help answer them. And also don't forget to check out my free training on macros and VBA to help you get started learning this awesome Excel skill. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.